The purpose of this video is to explain how the Renova RP Paracentesis Pump functions and how to properly set up and operate the system. Renova offers many benefits to both staff and patients. It enhances patient safety and satisfaction, is easy on staff, and is cost-effective. Many of these benefits, including its efficiency and adjustable flow rate, come from the mechanism that drives the device, a peristaltic pump. Peristaltic pumps are fairly common in the medical setting and can be found in such devices as infusion pumps and dialysis machines. The Renova RP pump employs this same peristaltic mechanism to draw acidic fluid from the body with a gentle, continuous flow. Renova setup and use is truly easy to learn. We'll now review the general process of setting up and operating the system. As you become accustomed to Renova, your team can decide how to tailor the process based on your preferences and existing workflow. Operation of the pump begins with ensuring the power cord is plugged into the back of the pump and then into a standard electrical outlet. Proper loading of the Renova RP tube set and connection of the Renova RP drainage bags are two of the most vital parts of the system operation. One end of the Renova RP tube set features a pair of stopcocks and is in the shape of a T. This T connector fits into the recessed area at the top of the pump like so. Press down firmly at the center of the T connector to ensure it is properly seated. Using the indicator on the front of the pump head, we can see how to properly load the tubing. When facing the pump, we see that the tubing should go to the bags on the right and to the patient on the left. When we lift the flip top of the pump head, we're able to see the rollers which are responsible for moving the fluid along as they contact the tubing. The thicker part of the tubing is designed specifically for this purpose. Center the thicker portion of the tubing over the rollers and close the flip top. At this point, you want to ensure that the tubing has not been pinched on either side by the flip top. Double check this before moving on. With the tubing properly in place, we can hang and attach a drainage bag on either side of the pump. Confirm the white pinch clamp on each bag is in the open position and then hang the bags using the posts on the side of the pump. The bag to tubing connection is very important, so take care to ensure you have firmly connected the bag to the T-connector and that you have tightened the spin lock connector. You'll find that one spin lock connector is tightened clockwise while the other is tightened counterclockwise. Failure to properly tighten the spin lock connector can result in the bag disconnecting during the procedure, increasing the risk of fluid exposure. When both bags are securely connected, let's take a look at the position of the stopcocks on the T-connector. The tube set comes with both stopcocks in the open position. To maximize efficiency, we will close one stopcock to direct fluid to a single side, allowing us to stagger bag changes and not stop our procedure. We want to always ensure that at least one stopcock remains in the open position at all times while the pump is in operation. We are now ready to begin draining fluid. The pump operates with just one knob that functions much like the volume knob of a radio. When you turn the knob clockwise, the green LED indicator will illuminate confirming that the pump is on. Begin slowly, and then gradually increase to your desired speed. This process is designed to give you fine control of the speed at which fluid is drained to maximize patient comfort and procedural efficiency. To maintain the simplicity of the device, the pump does not have an automatic shutoff. If you need to walk away, you can simply slow it down or turn it off. As the first bag nears capacity, we open the stopcock to the other bag. Now both bags will be filling slowly. When the first bag becomes full, remember the three C's. Close, clamp, cap. Close the stopcock first to seize fluid flow to the bag. Next, clamp the bag shut using the white pinch clamp. Loosen the spin lock connector and remove the bag from the T-connector. Once the bag is removed, cap it and follow your facility's procedural protocol for handling acidic fluid. Once the full bag has been removed, we replace it by following the original procedure for connecting a bag. Ensure you have firmly connected the bag to the T-connector and that you have tightened the spin lock connector. This bag change procedure is repeated until the fluid drainage is complete. 
If you experience a situation where the pump is running but fluid is not moving, confirm that the larger diameter tubing section is positioned properly over the pump rollers with the flip top closed. Be sure the direction of the tubing matches the visual indicator on the front of the pump head. When the flip top is closed, ensure that the tubing is centered in the track and is not pinched. One of the most important things to remember when using the Renova pump is to never close both of the blue stopcocks at the same time. Doing so can cause pressure to build up and put stress on the tubing. This increases the risk of fluid exposure. Another important point where errors have occurred is when changing the bag. Before clamping the full bag, the stopcock on that side must be closed. If fluid is still flowing to the bag when it's clamped, the pressure of the fluid will put stress on the bag connector and increase the risk of fluid exposure. Use the three C's to help prevent this error. Close the stopcock, clamp the bag, then remove and cap. We've now reviewed the setup and operation of the Renova RP Paracentesis Management System. We thank you for choosing Renova RP to improve your paracentesis experience. If you have any additional questions, please contact your local Renova RP representative 